Hey everybody. Well, uh, I know this is not a normal uh, video for me, but then I figured uh, it's probably a good idea to uh, expand the horizons of my um, of my channel. Uh, it's pretty obvious that uh, I've become sort of typecast. Uh, and as a future filmmaker, I don't want that to happen. And I've got some ideas and things to talk about. There's a lot to talk about, uh, especially for Americans today. And for a lot of other countries, and I'll cover a lot of it. Uh, you notice in my background, um, I'm not in my dorm. And there's a good reason for that. It's because my dorm has a really, really boring background. Uh, I really just don't want to talk from a boring background. So, um... So here I am, and there's a specific reason I chose this place. Uh, around the 16th century in the Middle East, uh, the first coffee houses came into the scene. Uh, people came there to drink Turkish coffee, read books, listen to music, uh, and they talk about major issues and politics and religion and everything else. Uh, and they were really, really popular. They became very persuasive and, uh, and not persuasive, but really, really, um, really important to the tide of politics. They became so influential. That was the word I was looking for. They became so influential uh, and popular that they started to spread and they went into Europe. Uh, in England, uh, many of the greatest names in British literature started they started in coffee houses. Uh, they became extremely important. Uh, coffee houses became extremely important to the tide of politics. Uh, they started actually scaring politicians. They scared them really bad. So you know, they they started saying, "Oh, this is where the uh, disillusion and the uh, and the bad people uh, met to." plot revolution against a uh, great country and they would they would say things like that uh, because they couldn't take the idea of uh, people getting together and talking. People getting together and talking is the scariest thing to any politician and that's why I'm here. The coffee house has power uh, over politics, over uh, situations. So here I am. Uh, so. Anyway, yeah, I've got reason, a, a big reason to talk. Uh, first of all, this, well, you, you wouldn't uh, get it from the top. I brought the mug myself because I didn't want to uh, spill on my computer. But um, this is a uh, white mocha. I highly suggest them if you don't like coffee but need coffee because these are really sweet. They don't have the bitterness of normal coffee. Uh, Anyway, as for politics, actual politics, uh, you may start to hate me for uh, some of the stuff I'm about to say because politics tend to make people hate other people. Uh, the main candidates, the ones you know about, the ones that are on TV, Barack Obama, Hillary Clinton, uh, John McCain, uh, all of the above, and all the, other, all the other main candidates that you see a lot on TV, they're frauds. Uh, I mean it. They are frauds. Uh, go to Project Vote Smart at votesmart.org. Uh, Vote Smart is an excellent website that gives you uh, all the idea of exactly what the candidates really stand for, what they really vote. And the truth is, it doesn't matter what they stand for. It doesn't matter. Uh, what they what they say they're gonna vote for. Uh, what matters is who is uh, giving them money. Uh, the, there are people called lobbyists, and if you, if you haven't had like, a political issues class, you might not know about them. Uh, lobbyists are uh, people who come from a company, come from a big company, and they give lots and lots of money to the politicians. 
in exchange for having the politicians vote a certain way uh, in office. And what Project Vote Smart does is it compares what politicians say they're going to do and what they've actually voted for fast. Uh, but if you follow the money, if you look where people are getting their money, you'll get the idea of what they're actually going to vote for. Uh, and what they've already voted for gives you a lot of an idea of what they're actually going to do if they become president. Uh, Hillary Clinton, for example, has voted twice for war bills. She's voted for the Iraq bill, and she voted for a bill that would allow President Bush to go and uh, invade Iran. Uh, not good, uh, in my opinion. Now, you're free to disagree with me, but if you do, my opinion of you just went way down. Um, and I, I know this is a controversial topic and very taboo, but you know, these are, these are, the, uh, these are my opinions. Um, so, what I want everyone who's watching this to do, especially if you're American and especially if you can vote, uh, go to votesmart.org, go to uh, Mike Gravel's website, uh, he's, I think, the most trustworthy candidate. I've met the guy, he's really friendly, great guy. Um, and, and he talks about the issues. He's very adamant on the issues and he doesn't take lobbyists. No lobbyist money. He's taking all his money from uh, private uh, donations from people like you and me. Uh, he's taken a huge stand against uh, such donations. And, um, and there are other reasons that I think you should uh, consider microvalent. Uh, I'm going to do a few more of these videos to uh, give you the issues, what the issues are, uh, why I believe what I believe about them, why you should do the same, and uh, then I'm going to give you an idea of what to do about it, uh, because everything uh, has something to do. You can, you can do something about everything uh, that's wrong with this country. You just need to take the initiative. Alright, so um, uh, I'll see you next time. I'll probably come to the same place. Uh, Starbucks is a great position to uh, talk politics from because of the long history of coffee houses in politics and in uh, the main flow of society. So, uh, until next time.